Hi friends, Simit here from InformTrades.com. In this video, I want to talk about uh, moving average crossover strategies and why they generally don't work, or you know, with some caveats they can work, but why on their surface uh, they don't work. This is a uh, topic I thought would be worth reviewing because a lot of textbook concepts like the moving average crossover strategy, or a lot of, when I say textbook concepts, I mean things that are just uh, very openly known or discussed. You know, once you come across technical analysis, you'll see a lot of people talking about these very basic strategies. A lot of them uh, don't work if you just apply them in their purest form. If you add some things, though, uh, they can be effective. And this is just one example of that. Okay, so uh, the key points. First, we'll start with what is the moving average crossover to find that. Uh, it doesn't work alone because of transaction costs. And like I mentioned, that's, you know, RSI above 70 or below 30. You know, all these sort of very common ideas. Uh, they won't work once you factor in transaction costs. Um, with that said, they can succeed as part of a larger system. So if you use more than just the simple indicator, more than just the moving average crossover, more than just the, you know, the RSI above 70, below 30, um, or, and use factor in other indicators, uh, then you can filter out you know, a lot of the opportunities that aren't that great. You'll reduce your drawdown, uh, focus on just the right opportunities, and that is how you can sort of outperform. So it's not that these concepts don't have any value whatsoever, but it's just uh, over relying on them or relying solely upon them is, uh, is not really going to help. Okay, just defining uh, what a moving average crossover is for those who may not know. Uh, it's basically when a shorter time period moving average crosses above or below a longer period moving average. And the idea is uh, signaling a change in the trend and that if you follow the shorter period moving average, uh, you can sort of ride that trend. So here we see a five period moving average crossing below a 20 period moving average and the market sure enough continues to go down. Now um, a lot of it depends on where you would have had your stop loss for instance. You know some traders may have gotten spiked out or stopped out excuse me here. Um, but clearly you see the basic concept uh, holds true in this regard and that the price actually fell down. Okay. Now, does this strategy actually work? John Hussman is a blogger and he, uh, he tracks moving average crossovers uh, in the S&P 500, um, you know, since going back to 1950. Uh, and he compared it to, you know, various moving average crossovers versus a buy and hold strategy. So what he found was that if you don't look at transaction costs, uh, you know, some of them certainly can outperform. You know, the 13 week, which is this green line, and uh, the 21 week, which is this purple line, uh, can outperform a buy and hold, which is this blue line right here. So you clearly see there's some significant outperformance on the 13 and 21 week uh, relative to a buy and hold. The caveat being when you are not factoring in transaction costs. Now, if you add in just a small transaction cost, a quarter percent slippage or, you know, factor quarter percent being incorporated into the slippage and the, uh, you know, commissions and spreads and things like that, uh, now you get a very different picture. Um, remember those shorter time frames, 13 week, 21 week, they're going to result in more transactions, which means more transaction costs. Uh, here is the blue line, you know, the buy and hold, and it clearly outperforms uh, everything else. Um, and an eight week, which is the most active, doesn't do anything at all. So this is, transaction cost is definitely something to think about in, in all aspects of your active trading. You really want to make sure that if you're trading actively that it's, uh, it's worth it, that your transaction costs are low, and that you're finding opportunities that justify the transaction costs. A lot of uh, systems that advertise returns, if you look at the fine print, they're not, talking, they're not factoring in transaction costs, which is a very significant um, concept. Okay, so solutions. Um, you can incorporate other tools in addition to moving average crossover. So for instance, if you have a moving average crossover that t says, you know, shorter period is crossing above the longer period, it's a buy signal. What are the fundamentals telling you? Is there some type of fundamental uh, tool or indicator that you rely on? Uh, market sentiment, is there, are there sentiment indicators or, or what is, what do you feel the news is going on in the news? Um, cycle analysis, we have a video on Martin Armstrong who's very big on that. Um, there's lots of so cycles in the stock market, there's sector rotation and seasonality that can all be incorporated. Uh, one of my personal favorites is of course support and resistance or price action analysis. I think if you incorporate that with some of these other uh, sort of standard concepts or textbook indicators, you can really get uh, the strategies you're looking for that make, that make active trading worth it. 